ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm delighted to be here. Thank you. Uh, I'm a NGRX contributor. I spoke on this topic last month at Angular Boston. I've developed six commercial Angular applications. Uh, Angular has become the front-end framework of choice at Upstate Interactive. Uh, we use it to serve enterprise customers, uh, military applications, uh, and the UAS drone industry. Angular 6, same, same, but different. A few command line changes, a few updates to the API, uh, IV teased in the near future, and with that, a few changes, uh, Angular Universal has gotten better. Angular Universal, of course, is a way to do server-side rendering, <coughs> and when you're interested in using that in the Angular world, you will use Universal. Started with Jeff Wepley, uh, it's grown a bit now, it's part of the Angular core, and when you're using Universal, a key piece of it is to understand that Angular, by default, is a client-side framework. So the code that you write is not rendered by the server in the beginning. It's rendered once the JavaScript gets downloaded. And the way that this impacts your application is different depending on what your use case is. So as I get into it, I'll encourage you all to consider your use case in particular and the differences between a universal application and a application that is Angular client side. So taking you through a new project, the first command that you'll do is ng new. So ng new NYC and then the prefix there NYC and skip tests. Uh, to the chagrin of others, I'll share publicly now that uh, we don't do testing immediately. Uh, when we build an application, first we write some code and we test afterwards. And a part of that, we do the skip test as a way to uh, get started in a clean way. And with prefix as well, if you've ever built an Angular application, you might be interested to know that when you do the dash dash prefix, instead of starting with an app dash, you can start with the prefix that you care to do. So, in addition to that, I didn't do a dash dash routing, but you might want to do that as well if you wanted to add routing to your application. So, CD into your folder. We're dreaming of the day of flat installs in Angular. And then you're going to run this command called ng generate universal client project NYC. Here's the first part where we go to something that's different now. If you were previously running universal and you were looking on the web, you'd likely see uh, instructions that were incorrect. This dash dash client project is a new way and it's a factor of the refactor that was done to Angular and it's called uh, architect. So, you're no longer building different applications as you would in Angular 5 and previous. You're now building the same application for different targets. And that difference there is conceptual as well as uh, practical when you're developing and you're getting into creating projects. Next, you do your NPM installs. And on this, it's important to note that this NG Universal Map <coughs> Module Loader Mouthful uh, that's there because when you're doing an application in Angular, you're likely interested in the easy lazy loading. Yet on the server, lazy loading is a different, it's a different beast. So you have to deal with it differently, and that's what that save install does for you. TS loader loads your webpack, expresses your server, and in the most recent versions of webpack, they've debundled the CLI, so you include that on your own as well. And now we write an express server. So the express server is different now. The, uh, the mere suggestion is that you need to have a server. If you were running Angular without a universal project, you'd be able to run it as a, a static site. You could use something like an S3 bucket if you wanted to in order to host it. Yet for the server rendering to work, you of course need a server. Between these two slides is a Webpack config. And a Webpack config is also necessary on the server. It's a manual addition. It's fairly straightforward. As you look in the internet for a config, you can find it. And then finally, uh, you run a couple commands. So in your NPM scripts, you'll add a few of them. And when you add those scripts to your uh, package, the first one is going to build, and then the second is going to serve. 
This adds a bit to the time for your application to start and run. So as you consider this and you're doing development, uh, be interested in ways to speed that up because the CLI <coughs> takes about 60 seconds to run it and it is getting better. Well, here's that config that I just shared with you and then here's the, the scripts. So for the scripts, the few steps that you have that are bundled in there are build for SSR and I'd like to point to the middle bit where we see ng run nyc build production. That's another new command to Angular 6. So ng run is a way of working with that architect. And when we see NYC, that's our application, and then build is a target, server is a target. And then within NYC build production, production is a configuration of the target. So it becomes hierarchical in some of the ways that you might appreciate on an enterprise team when your modules become hierarchical and everything becomes a bit more portable. Uh, so too now does the Angular uh, outputs from Architect. And then transfer state. So transfer state, when you're building for the server and you have an Angular application, you can understand that your server is going to come rendered, your server page is going to come rendered with data. So if you understand that and you also understand that Angular is going to be using services and the HTTP service especially in order to grab data when it loads, then you might realize that you have two data calls for the same data. So transfer state deals with that. So in your app mod module for the browser, uh, you include this thing called uh, with server transition and you give it an app ID which is the name of your server application. And when you do the same on the server, you add this server transfer state module as well. And then in your service, and your service here is going to be your uh, place where you make your HTTP calls. You might have that be like an API service TS file, you might have different services for different HTTP calls, but this is a bit that you'll include. And when we look at it, you include it by dependency injection like you would anything else, and then you create something called a, a state key. A state key is fairly straightforward. Your server needs to tell your client that this data exists, and when it does exist, don't do the HTTP call. The way that it does that is it injects a uh, script tag into the end of the index file, which is a stringified JSON, and ultimately, having the key is a way that it looks up, does it exist or not. And this is what that looks like. Instead of a regular HTTP call, you can continue to do it, yet you're going to, before that, check to see if this state key exists. So in the example here, we're seeing that const post equals this state key get post key, which is a reference to the key that we made. If it's there, then that means we did a server render and we already have the data. If it's not there, then we do that HTTP <coughs> call. So there's two return statements on this slide, and it looks like one of them is going to immediately return an observable using that observable of method that you see there with the uh, value of posts. So in this way, you can continue to use NGRX or your state management and have it bubble through and act in the same way as it would using effects or whatever it is that your state management service is using and have it all interoperate very nicely. So this works great with NGRX and the following HTTP call will otherwise operate as usual. And with that final one, uh, pipe, if it's on the server, it's going to be setting that state key. So in this way, you're continuing to have a minimal API call. So you build, you run, and when you do it in the end, what you'll find is that you have an application that's server rendered and that is also using minimal API calls. So there's more to be uh, learned about this. You can go to the, the blog of my company, blog.upstate.agency slash angular, to read more on the topic. And also you can look to some videos by Jason Jean, who's on the uh, Angular Universal team. And there's two great Angular Air videos there. And with those in mind, uh, you can go even further. And this deck itself is also available if you go to upstate.agency slash angular and you'd like to interact with some of the things that you're seeing on this slide. All right. So some of you may be interested in the how of Angular Universal. And you can go to the website link that I showed you just there. Uh, some of you more may be interested in the why. And the reasons why are established. There's three that are often circulated. The first is SEO. 
The second is shareability. And then the third is perceived page performance. When you consider those things, you need to know your application and know whether you need those or not. I can share with you that shareability is when you have a Facebook link or a iMessage message and it populates with great content. I think in this audience, we all know what SEO is. And then in improved, uh, improved performance is that you have static text being rendered from the server. So there's nothing that the templates on the Angular client side need to render. They're already there. So it does look a bit faster. Now, Genius.com is the website that does that. They do it really well. And so if a few of you are wondering who is it for, then you're on to a good question. Because who is it for is what makes development an adult game. A teenager could do most of the, the how and could read most of the why. And yet, as we develop and we're working on projects that others are going to use, who is it for is the epic question. Genius.com is a website that displays lyrics. <coughs> Genius has a large funding from Mark Andreessen of $15 million. And when they started the website, they displayed lyrics. Other websites did that as well, A to Z Lyrics and Metro Lyrics being two of them. <coughs> yet, Genius did something a bit more. They made you have the ability to click on a lyric. As small as that seems, that has a large impact on the people who use the website. Because when you click on that lyric, you get the meaning of the song. So as you listen to a song, Genius started as rapgenius.com. Everybody here has heard a rap lyric that they have no idea what the person is saying. And you could think about speed as a factor. You could also think about different contexts of people coming from different backgrounds and using different vernacular in order to uh, share something with a different audience. But you want to know what they're saying. And so Genius has something to do with that. And in addition to that, your interpretation may be different than another's. So as with all art, when you want to share an interpretation, having a forum to do that increases not only the value of the art, but the value of the community around it. Genius capitalized on this in a way that's built them into a, a strong and great company. And some of you may be wondering, assuming you know what Genius is, could the website exist without server rendering? And in addition to that, state management. So advanced state management comes into Genius. It's a very interactive website that has the ability to click on a lyric. You have the ability to upvote and downvote. You can put GIFs in the comments. You can see who's viewing the website live at the same time as you. And with these things all considered, advanced state management is just as key as server rendering is to Genius. So they are the best annotated lyrics application. If you use Spotify, you'll see their lyrics inside of there. <coughs> if you've done a search for lyrics, you'll see that they're at the top of the results a lot of the times. And likely when they're not the number one, you're going to click on them anyway, just because you know that there's something more promising there than you'll find elsewhere. As a result, in the USA, they are the 120th most popular website. That makes A to Z lyrics, I'm sorry, 1,000, uh, a distant second, and Metro lyrics an even more distant third. So. The final thing is that 75% of Genius's traffic comes from search, engine, uh, search engines. So consider what that means to Genius to have a server rendered page. It means a tremendous business. It means tremendous amounts of visibility. And without it, it would be difficult to consider whether, I'm sorry, it wouldn't be difficult to, con to consider. It'd just be difficult to understand that this website could exist. It would just be difficult to exist entirely. So this is the Metro Lyrics site for Love by Kendrick Lamar. You can see on it that there's some lyrics, and then there's this thought about what does this song mean to you. And when this site loads, it loads with a .html extension. It's a very static page, it loads very fast. And this is the same song from A to Z Lyrics as well. This is, song, this is a page that's more plain. We can see here that it's got a uh, play Love, which is an ad. When you click on that, you go to Amazon Music and they get you to sign up for Prime membership or uh, otherwise. So when you look at it, you do get one thing out of it, though. You get the lyrics. You can see very clearly what the lyrics are, and you can read through them, and you can do it very quickly. So these websites have a place in the world, and they were there before Genius. I expect they'll be around for a while. When you visit Genius and you visit their page, you can see a bit more. And so what I've prepared is just a short clip of interacting with it, and there's a little background music to it too. So uh, I'll play that for you now.
So the Who Is It For is for anybody who's interested in music, interacting with it, learning more about it. That's why it's the 120th most popular website, because there's not a person in this room, and there's not a person in any room that doesn't have an appreciation for music. When you take that as your starting point, and then you go deeper into it, you have to think about, again, server-side rendering. Server-side rendering is the basis for Genius's success. With SEO optimization, it's been able to raise not just the $15 million that it did from Andreessen Horowitz, but it's up to $80 million in funding. It's a, a grand company, and it couldn't exist without server-side rendering. So there's enough challenges involved in doing it. But you have to understand the who is it for is not for anybody who knows what the acronym SEO stands for. When you go to a bar and you ask somebody what's your favorite version of Angular, they're not going to look at you in any type of way with a response that you're looking for. Nobody's going to say, I really, really liked when they removed res.json by using HTTP client. But that's the person who Angular server-side rendering is for. That's the person who state management is for. Even if they never know it, it matters to them whether they, um, when they view the internet. And as builders of it, we need to understand who that is. So server-side rendering and advanced state management deliver lyrics and meaning at Genius. <clears throat> so a lot of people have fun with Angular and its size. It's got a large API surface. And there's some points that can be made about that that would be valid from anybody from uh, a different background. Yet it does something that no uh, competitor does. And if you do look at React and Vue, when it comes to Mindshare, they are competitors. They build a framework. <coughs> uh, Vue is close to it. React doesn't really try to be. And so it really has a, a different place in the world. And doing server rendering with it is uh, a wonderful example of what a framework can deliver with very uh, straightforward direction. You can get up and running. And then with very uh, large teams, you can continue to run. So a few lines of code <coughs> in Angular can build a great component. And a great component, when combined with services and providers, builds a module. And a module with a build system and a development pipeline creates a great business. And a great business with a good revenue stream provides a tremendous living. And that living can make all the difference for uh, anybody who is developing, and it can make a difference for anybody who's viewing the applications that we all build. And it all starts with a line of code. So uh, Genius did it their way. And I'll leave you with uh, what King Kedrick has to say on that. Uh, don't do it like he did, because you ain't who he is. But we can win. Thank you. <laughs>